Williams in the two games I've seen him has absolutely dazzled. We know what he's capable of, but his ability to spread the wealth on the, on the dance floor is really unbelievable. Everyone's getting touches four different touchdowns to four different receivers in game one, four different receivers and five out of five touchdowns in game two. He's a real pros pro. It's not even just the highlights, his ability to spread the ball all across the field at every throw he needs to. This guy would have been the first quarterback taken in last year's draft. There's no doubt in my mind. We're looking at a prospect like Trevor Lawrence, like Andrew Luck, like Peyton Manning. Now, on the comments of his father, this is also not the first time we've seen a father intervene in the NFL draft. We saw Archie Manning intervene with Eli Manning when he did not want to go to the Chargers, right? So he forced his way out of San Diego at the time. Now, of course, Los Angeles to New York and the Philip Rivers for Sean Merriman deal. I think it's a situation where we're at the peak of the player empowerment era, not only the player empowerment era in the pros, but the player empowerment era in college. So these guys are getting, how much money is he making this year? It's not like he's starved for cash. If he wants to come back to USC and even up his pay even more, like hypothetically, if he wins the Heisman and becomes the first player to go back to back in the Heisman since Archie Griffin, what if he wants to go for a three-peat? What if USC falls short? They get to the playoffs, but they don't win the national championship. It'll only get better in their first year in the Big Ten with higher competition, higher ratings, higher viewing numbers. And who wants to go play for the Arizona Cardinals? You really get – you don't get that many chances. You know what I'm saying? And we've seen so many guys' careers ruined by being drafted in the wrong spots. You know, like, it, see, had Sam Darnold, for, let's go down the, just go down the USC line. Had Sam Darnold been drafted to a better team than the New York Jets and Adam Gase, would he still be a starting quarterback in the NFL? We saw, we've seen the flashes. Matt Leinart, had he not been drafted by the Cardinals, would he be, and I'm sure they talk, right? I mean, we see them in the Heisman commercials. I'm sure they chit-chat. Had he not been drafted by the Arizona Cardinals, would his career be better? Like, by and large, had the Cardinals not gotten older route with Carson Palmer, with Kurt Warner, they'd be a pretty trash franchise for the entirety of the 21st century. It's the Kurt Warner luck of the draw. It's the Carson Palmer bringing him in off the coattails of Kurt Warner um, and riding that kind of era out into the sunset. But the Kyler Murray experiment looked like it was going strong. That's faltered. And, and Cliff Kingsbury was a disaster. She's never been the coach. And this is all under the assumption the Cardinals are going to be the worst team. I'd be thoroughly shocked if they did not have the first pick in the draft next year. Um, they made some nice moves in the offseason. But if, if you're Caleb Williams, I don't want to go play in Arizona. What do they have, what do they have for me? Like, what, what's going on there? Is it a good situation that I'm walking into? Like, if you go to the quarterbacks – Like Bryce Young's walking into a pretty sweet situation, all things considered. Like they weren't the worst team last year. Their defense is good. Their division's winnable. Their head coach is very experienced, especially with young quarterbacks. CJ Stroud, on the other hand, you know, he walked, or not on the same hand, I would say. Texans not looking great. New head coach, though, they go get two top tier guys in the draft. They did a good job getting as much as they could for the Deshaun Watson deal. Their offensive line is pretty solid. They They got veteran weapons around him. Uh, good run game, and the defense is getting better. You know, it, you don't want to go to a situation where things are bad or like Carl Williams said, it, it, it's kind of a lose-lose at times because you're going to the worst team. Like, he know he, we know his son is going to be the first overall pick. Like, there's no way it's going to be Drake May. There's no way it's going to be any of the unbelievable – Sanders, Penix, you know, Bo Nix, they were all great in their first go-around. Jackson Dart was impressive for Ole Miss. You know, I'm, I grew you know, a Longhorn fan as well. Quinn Ewers was outside the long ball, was really solid. No one can touch this kid. He is untouchable in the NFL draft. He could sit out the rest of the year. He'd still be the first overall pick. So if he doesn't want to go play for the Arizona Cardinals and they had the first pick, I, I don't blame him. But it's a team like the Bucks. Things are a bit different. You know, we're talking a different story. The Cardinals have, you know, two shots, though, at redemption because they have the Texans pick. So the Texans are the worst team. Cardinals are playing in some pretty sweet lottery moments. 